Hi everyone, welcome to the QA Ops channel. I'm Rafael Lima, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Git CLI, the command line interface for Git. Right, so if you if you have a Windows and you don't have Git installed or a terminal installed, uh, I'm going to post a, a, a vi the video that I explain how you can set up your Windows both below Windows 10 and above Windows 10, so you can have a proper terminal on your Windows and the Git CLI installed on uh, your Windows as well. Right. So I'm going to start. Uh, straight to the practice of Git and uh, I had also a previous video that explained the Git theory, the, the tree theory of Git. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video also I'm going to post that video here as well so you can you can see the theory of Git uh, before you can actually do the the command line usage. Right? So what I have here is I have a repository, I have, yeah, and I have the presentation. This is the presentation that I explained in my previous video. So what we're going to do, I'm going to uh, create a repository from scratch. So I'm going to go into my personal repository and I'm going to give a name version control. Doesn't really matter. You can choose either public or private. I'm going to leave it public. I'm going to delete it anyway. So I'm going to choose a README. Uh, if you're going, to, if you have any specific language that you're going to be using here, used here, you can choose whatever language uh, that you need. And it's going to create a Git ignore. And I'm going to do MIT license, which uh, allows people to do anything they want as long as they give the proper uh, recognition. So I'm going to create a repository and I have a repository already. There isn't much, right? So I can come here and I can choose uh, clone, right? Again, if you haven't set up your GitHub, uh, I also have a video showing how you can set up GitHub. I'm also going to be posting that video here as well. So I have the terminal here on my left and the presentation on my right. So if you at, at the very end of the presentation uh, we have this section where i talk about you have a git repository on github in my case you do a git pull or a git clone to get uh if git clone is going to be to start uh if you haven't if you haven't had that code yet or the repository in your local machine and git pull is if you are updating your local repository so i got i got the link already so i do git clone and the name of the repository. Uh, in my case, I have two GitHub uh, set up here, so I need to put personal. So Git can also uh, figure out to which uh, it's going to authenticate against either my uh, pr professional repository or my personal repository. So I'm giving personal here, so it's going to authenticate on my personal repository. I also explained this in the video that I that I do the Git setup. And if I want a different name uh, on my folder instead of this one, if I don't give any specific param parameter after this, it's going to create a folder on my computer in the folder that I am uh, called version control. If I give something here, it's going to create whatever I give it, like something is going to create a folder called something, but version control is fine. And it's cloning. So I have on my local already. So if I go to CD version control, it's already there. Um, and what's important to know is Git has your global configuration and your, lo your localized configuration, right? So the global configuration is for every folder that you do. If you don't change, your local configuration, if you don't change uh, your local configuration, is going to take your global configuration, right? Your global configuration is on your, it's, it's at the home of your computer. So if I do CD at home, uh, dollar home, it's going to go to your home, which is users rafael.lima. And if I do git cat, if I do cat git dot git config, is going to get the configuration of Git, and you're going to see that this is attached to my transferwise, my 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 professional uh, user, right? 
but I'm on my local computer and on, I'm doing, uh, I'm developing per personally, so I don't want to, that to be attached. So if I do git config uh, dash dash global user dot email, it's going to show the my company's uh, email. So let me go back to the folder that I was. If I do here dash dash global, it's still going to pick up my transferize my company's mail. If I remove the global, it's going to take the information from my local folder and it's still my transferize, right? Because I haven't set. I, I, I just downloaded and I did not set that. So it's going to pick it up my global. So since this is my, my uh, work computer, it makes sense that my global is attached to my professional uh, GitHub account. But if you're working on your, your personal computer, your global should be your personal details, right? This is going to be attached to your commit. So when you push, it's going to say whatever it's on user email and whatever is on your user.name. So just make sure you got this correct. So let's set this up for me. So when I do git config email, I'm going to say my personal email. And the name is going to be my name, which is the same. Awesome. So git, if I do listing uh, L, as in if I don't do L, it's going to list like this. If I do if L, it's going to list as a list. And A for hidden files. So anything dot is hidden file. So if I go into this git, and at least again, you're going to see that there are a lot of information related to Git there. That's how Git uh, is going to deal with the, my local tree, right? So this is, um, I'm downloading to a local directory and it's becoming a local repository. So if I do Git, if I do cat config to display all this information here, now I have my local information, which is how file email and, and, and my personal. So if I do Git again here, and I remove the settings. So now my local is my personal email and my global is my professional email. So this is the first setup that you wanna do. If your global is your personal, you don't have to do anything else. Cool, so let's uh, keep going. So now I told you about the git pool and git clone, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the git add right so now you you are doing your changes you want to to i don't know you are doing a code a specific thing and you, you want to do a commit so i'm going to open my visual my just a simple uh visual studio code i'm going to create a new file here and i'm going to say my first commit and this is my first commit. Awesome, I save the file. And if I do a git status, that's the other command that I'm going to learn, you're going to see that my, the file is already here and this is untracked. It hasn't tracked yet. So uh, I need to make sure that uh, I put this file to start being tracked. So right now it's a brand new file. It doesn't know what changed, how it was in the past. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do git add in the name of the file and when I do git status and this is the presentation when I do git status now this is uh, on my staging area right so we I had a file on my local director I did git add to add to my staging or index area and git even helping me like if, if you want to unstage you execute this command and this is going to re, uh, get out of your staging, right? So let's try this command. If I do this command and the file and I do a git status, it left the staging area, but the file was not deleted. It just was removed from my staging area. So let's add it again. I do a git status and there it is. So what I'm going to do now is once I want to add something to my local repository, I do git commit, right? So I do git commit 
and I pass a message. And I say, this is my first commit. I do git status. It says, your branch is ahead of the origin master by one commit. So I'm ahead of my origin master. Origin is, is uh, master is the branch, the master branch, and origin is uh, the git repository. So by one commit, right? So now I'm right here. I have everything on my local repository, and I can do as many commit as I would like. So let's do now. This is my second commit, right? So I do a git status, and now the file is not untracked. Now it's modified. I can do git add dash p, and it's actually going to show me what changed. Right, so uh, it thought that I removed this line and I added the line and then I added a blank space and that the second commit. I do want to add this. I do git status, it's there, git commit dash m. If I don't do dash m, it's going to open vi or you can set this up for open or whatever editor you want. And I'm going to say this is my second commit. I save the file, git status. Now this branch is ahead by two commit. I go back here and now I want to send this to my local repository, to my to my GitHub, to my origin repository. Then what I do is I do git push. It's going to push that to origin master. So if we go back here to the name, uh, to the repository, I'm going to refresh the page. This is my, my first commit, it's already here. So, and I have two things there, right? I have my, my first commit and my second commit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change straight here. I'm going to, I'm going to add this, add, edit this file. I'm going to edit this file. I'm going to put, this is my, third commit and I'm going to say my third commit and I'm going to commit the changes so now I have I have my repository is, is different than my my local repository is different than my my remote repository right so I need to do a git pull to update right so if I do git status it's fine. Then I do git pull. Right, so make sure that see I, I don't have my third commit here. I do git pull. It recognizes something and it's already here. This is my third commit. So now I have everything here and I was able to pull. I, I did this pull here, which I got the new changes, right? So Another thing that we can we can we can do is I can actually see my logs, right? So everything that we did, I can do git log, and it's going to show all the logs. So see, my third commit. Uh, this is my second commit, and this is a commit, right? So if we go back to the presentation a little, when I talk about the commit, we have the author. So let me zoom in. We have the author, the date time, the description, the files change, and the, the, the detail changes. So I do have the commit. I have the author, which is me. I have a uh, the, the timestamp, the message, and I can actually get the, the commit, the message here, the actual commit, do git show. And I actually have access to everything that changed. This was the file that changed, and these are the messages that, that it had. So the commit has access, you have access to everything there. I, I can also search my log. I can do git log grep, which is a Unix command for searching. And I can say commit. And it's going to find all the commit that has the commit name. I can do second. And I only have one commit with the name second in it. So you can also search 
for any specific uh, commits that you did so you can actually get that code again All right so uh, great so one, one extra command that I would like to show you is a revert so let's say you did the changes that you want to do but now you want to we want to remove the git log the, the the third commit I want to remove this commit here so what I'm going to do I'm going to get the commit number I'm going to say git revert and I put the commit number here and here you say you you are reverting the my third commit right so this is I'm happy with this message so now when I do git log I don't have I have my my third commit and I have a revert third commit if I look at the file the third commit is gone but the third commit is still here right so what I need to do I need to do git push and when I refresh the third commit is gone so this is a very simplistic uh, way of using git but those commands it it's the most basic but most used commands that uh, you need if you know that those commands you can use the command line uh, in any unix machine or, or linux machine even on a windows as, as i already showed how you can do that but then you are free from any tool you just need a command line and internet and you are free from any other tool which is this is a really important because now you can you can do on a unix a terminal you can do on a docker machine you can do in any computer regardless of what machine it is right just need the terminal the git cli and a internet right by the way uh, all of the commands that i showed it's here on my repository on my qa ops version control repository i'm going to be uh, putting the link on the on the description of the video you have all the basics command that I showed today and the commands that I will be showing on next video so thank you for watching uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please do so uh, and I'm going to see you on the next video where I'm going to actually create this tree we're going to together create this tree here this tree that i created on git i'm going to show you how you can actually have the master branch how you're going to deal with branches how you can merge a branch uh, back to master and you're going to be dealing exactly on on how you can create this specific tree here all right thank you for